Okay, next I want to add a custom calculated field. Just like we did in the forms, I want to show you how you can do the same thing in the reports. So for example, I have my purchase data report that we just went over with the report wizard in the last training video. I'm going to go ahead and double click open it up to refresh your memory here. So what I've done is I've grouped by each department or by department code all the employees within that department who has a computer assigned to them with the asset tag, the barcode, um, which manufacturer you purchase it from, the date received, and the total purchase price. Well, what I'd like to do is on each record or each employee that has a computer here with the asset tag, I want to be able to amortize the cost of the computer. In other words, the purchase price of the computers over a three-year period. So, you know, it's basically taking this price right here and dividing it by three. That's the calculated field I want to add. So to add that, I want to add that in the detail view, because these are the details of this group, the department code where it's grouped by, okay? So keep that in mind when I right-click and I go to the design view. Again, it's the detail here. See that detail bar? When I click on it, anything that's underneath that bar is going to be duplicated in the detail group. In the detail group for department code 100 is going to be the details for each employee that has a computer in that department 100. So I want to put it in this section here, or in this grouping, the details. To do so, I want to come up here on the design tab in the controls group and click on the text box button, the AB button. When I click on it, and I move over in the details group, you see that little plus sign with the AB next to it? Just go ahead and click and drag to create your text box when you let go of it. Not only does it create the control box here, but it also creates the label. Because then we can come in here and type something in the label and say this is amortized. So what I'm going to do is I don't have anything in the report view as far as the layout goes here that has the labels within the details. It's all just data that's pulling in. Any label that I have, you can see it's up at the top in the page header. It's at the top of each page. It has the department code asset tag. Let me click on the view button. You see up at the top department code just at the top of each page. I only have one page it looks like here. So in any case, what I can do is I can put the label up here. You can actually see, because I didn't delete the label, it's already pulling the default text, what is it, 18 in there. So let's get rid of that label here with that control box, put our formula within it so it actually calculates over a three-year period for each computer here in that detail group. See how it's repeating in each detail, in each computer for each group that's there? So let me go back and click on the View button to Design View. Let me click on that little, this is where it gets a little bit confusing because it's overlaid against the background of another text box here, this label. Let me click on it and hit the delete key so it just deletes the label because we don't want the label, we just want the control box. Then I can click and drag the control box up just a little bit. If it goes too far, you may want to use the arrow keys on the keyboard so it does it incrementally, especially if you hold down the control key and then use your arrow keys. But I'm going to go ahead and bounce it over here using my left arrow key so it's right up next to the purchase price. In fact, control and using my down arrow so I can get it oh, just about yay right. Okay, in this unbound text box, what I need it to do is I need to say, look, you're a calculated control box now. So to get it to calculate, I want to bring up the property sheet on this control box here and type in my formula or function. To do so, you can just, well, you can always right-click on the box and then left-click on properties down below in the shortcut menu. Or just make sure you have this uh, control box selected. And then come up here in the tools group on the design tab and click on property sheet. That brings it up. Here's the control source box on the alt tab. This is where we can go ahead and type in our formula or build the formula. If you know the formula, you can just type it in if you know how to multiply it by another field, like if you know how to interact that formula with another field, for example. I want to be able to divide the purchase price field by three, because that's going to get my amortized amount over a three year period for that, the purchase price on each computer, right? So I could come in here in the control source field, right click, and then left click on zoom so it opens it up because that's too tiny. I mean, I just can't type it on there and be able to see it. Of course, I can click and drag and stretch out the uh, property sheet, but zooming in seems more efficient to me here. I'm going to go ahead and type in the equals sign, because when it comes to formulas and calculations, you always want to type in equals. And then what we want to do is we want to take the field. What's the name of the field? It's called purchase price, isn't it? Let me click and drag this out of the way, or down here so I can see it. See it? Purchase price. Now, is there a space between the purchase and price? No. So I want to type it in just like I see it here except I want to make sure that to define that it's a field that I'm dividing this by, by three. Anytime you want to interact or calculate with another field and you want to define the field, you always have to use square brackets. So equals square bracket, type in the name of the field. It's going to be purchase price, no spaces, close my square brackets, then use my divisor symbol. And again, this is something you'd learn in Excel, so make sure you watch those training videos. Uh, multiplications would be the asterisks, of course, and then three, and that's it. Now, you could say, well, Kurt, you didn't capitalize P in purchase or P in price. That's okay. It doesn't really care about being case sensitive when it comes to performing the calculations here and pulling in the information from the control box purchase price. 
So I'm going to click OK, and you can see it's up here, that little tiny box. Make sure you hit the Tab key so it tabs out of the field, and when you tab out, Access is going to look back in the field and do a check to make sure that it likes what you've typed in. I mean, if you start typing in some funky symbols, some carrots and, or asterisks that aren't in the right places, then it'll give you a pop-up error. So let me go ahead and scroll over to the right here, and there it is. You can see the calculation right within the box. Now that's the box. If I go ahead and I click on the View button right now, it's kind of messy. In other words, I don't have the label up at the top of the page to tell me what this number's about. Not only that, but, I mean, look at all those decimal places. And also, it would be nice to have this format and currency. So let's make a few additional changes. I'm going to right-click, go back to left-click on the design view, OK? And the format, my control box is still selected. And over here in the property sheet, it's still up. If I just click on that format arrow and I go down, it's cut off, I know, but we're looking for currency, and there it is, currency. Click on it. So now it's going to be displayed in currency. The decimal places are going to be automatic, um, which is fine. You can also click on the drop down arrow and say, I just want two decimal places. Leave it like that. If you don't want auto, which is two decimal places, or we could say it could be one less decimal place. Let me scroll back up, select auto. And then I'll close out of the property sheet so I can get more space, or I can just click and drag and scroll over here. Now I want to create a label up here that's going to say amortize. So it defines that field at the top of each page. To do that, to create a label, you want to come up here to the Design tab in the Controls group and click on the AA button, which is the Label Control. Click on it once, and then just go ahead and click and drag in here, and then type in the name of the label. Amor. Then when I'm finished, hit Enter on the keyboard and it adds it. The only problem with this is that is it's in blue and you can see the others kind of in a gray or white here against a black background you know I can come in here and try to guess what the font is if the font isn't the same what the font color is what the font size is if it isn't the same but here's a shortcut and this you actually learn not only in Excel but you learn in my Microsoft Word training videos as well but what I want to do is I want to be able to copy the formatting of any one of these labels over here and paste it onto this one so they're the exact same font, exact same color, and so forth. To do that, go ahead and select one of the labels here. Come up here on the Design tab in the Font group and click on the Format Paintbrush button. Turns it on, doesn't it? Then when I hover down here, you see the brush next to my pointer. All I have to do is click on, on the label that I want to paste the formatting that I have selected over here to, and it'll automatically paste it over there once I click on it. See, I pasted it, automatically pasted the formatting, and you see how it zipped over to the right-hand side? It looks like the formatting is right aligned that I copied over here. I mean, it copies the whole formatting, the alignment, the size of the font, the color of the font, and so forth. So if that doesn't work for me, I can click on this box, and then come up here in the font group and click on the left align, lines it over to the left. If I hover over that right middle handle and I get a two-way black arrow, I can click and drag and bring that in just a little bit, can I? Not only that, but you see how it's off a little bit? See how these labels are topped aligned just perfectly against each other and this one's down a little bit? I can either eyeball that or better yet, select this label, hold down the shift key and select the next label and do what's called a top alignment. In other words, the label or control that's closest to the top. I can come up here on the range tab in the control alignment group and click on the top and it automatically bumps everything up that's below that so it's topped aligned to the furthest label or control that's to the top here and that's the purchase price. Now we want to go ahead and take a view of this, and I can't do it from the Range tab because it has no View button, so I could just right-click on the tab and come down and left-click on Report View. Okay, a couple of things. Amortize looks good here, but this is way over to the right. I want to bring the control box in further and maybe put a little box around it. So what we could do is we can go back and click on the View arrow to Design View. Well, first we want to click off in a blank area because it's all selected here, isn't it? Click off in a blank area, click on Purchase Price here, Come up and left click on the property sheet, and you can see the formatting's in currency. The decimal places are automatic. It's in plain text formatting. It's got the color, the hairline, the border width. It's actually got a border color. This formatting is all the way around it. Well, if I close off, I can do the same thing with my format paintbrush. I mean, we'll go more in depth in level two and level three, how to customize these things, but for right now, I would just want to copy the format over. So I selected this box here, right? The control box, not the label click on the format paintbrush, come over here and click on this control box here, and then let's click on the view button. Adds the formatting, the box line around it. Um, it's still aligned to the right. I mean, I don't like that. So we can go back to the view, design view, and let's click on the box. And let's go ahead and left click on the left align box here, and then click on the view button, and it looks better. The only other thing I probably need to do here is just click and drag these boxes in so it actually fits and doesn't look bad. So back to the design view, 
hover over the right middle handle of this control box and then click and drag to pull it in. Even though it cuts off your formula there, the result in the report view is what we're looking for, so it doesn't matter if it cuts it off here. It just only matters when we go back to our report view if it's going to cut off the actual dollar amount here. So far, I don't have anything that's going to go into the millions where it keeps pushing it out here or it gets cut off. If it does, then I can go ahead back in the design view, click and drag that right middle handle and pull it out further. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.